So now that we're talking a little bit about type parameters, and type parameters are something that we're going to continue to return to and refresh your memory about as we go. Um, we've introduced them kind of a little bit early this semester because we want to teach you how to use lists and, and, and a couple of other data structures that we're going to talk about later in the week because they're just so useful. Um, but this introduces this whole idea of type parameters and these angle brackets and stuff like that. So one of the things I wanted to do is just show you how to identify these type parameters when you look at uh, Java documentation. So here's kind of the idea. There's this list in Kotlin that can store all kinds of different things. You can create lists to store strings. You can create lists that store integers. You can create lists that store any type of value that Kotlin knows how to work with. Um, but what this means is that now when we think about like when I access the elements of a list, what does the method return? The return type actually depends on the type parameter that we use when we create the list. And so if we look at the documentation together, right? So let me make this a little bit bigger. Um, so this is the actual Kotlin documentation for the list class. And you'll see, well, there's a, a, quite a few things here that are probably confusing. But this thing right here in angle brackets is, is a type parameter. And what is, what's happening here is that E is not a type in, in Kotlin. It's a placeholder. It's a, it's a type parameter, but in the documentation, it's a placeholder. And, and here, E actually stands for element. So whatever the type is that you create, you can think of substituting it. So let's say I create a list of strings. Everywhere in this documentation where I see a capital E inside a type bracket or in various parts of the documentation, I can replace that with string if I've created a list of strings. I can create replace that with capital int if I've created a list of ints or double or whatever, whatever the type is of the elements that I'm putting inside that list. Um, and so for example, here's a method, and, and there's some other things about this that uh, I don't want to talk about yet, including abstract, but there's a method that lists have called contains. And contains will test whether or not a particular element exists in that list. And you'll see it's a function called contains. It returns a Boolean, but then there's this, oh, here we go, right? Um, and let's not worry about some of this stuff. This is the tough thing with looking at documentation is there's frequently a lot of fuzz uh, when you're getting started with the language and there's some things that might be confusing. Um, so there's this element and here's the type E. And so the idea here is if you have a list of strings, what you need to pass to contains is a string. If you have a list of ints, what you need to pass to contains is an int. If you have a list of doubles, what you need to pass to contains is a double. So the, the thing that you're looking for in the list should match the type of the list. And that makes sense, right? Because there's no point looking for an int in the list of strings. You're never going to find one, right? That's usually a mistake. Um, let's see here. Same thing. Let me look for a different, uh, any, it's reversed. OK, there's a, there's a bunch of methods in here. Um, and I don't want to look at the associate ones. Uh, lists, lists in Kotlin do have quite a few different methods. Let me see if I can find another one that has a, has a type parameter in it. Um, there's a couple of different type parameters that are floating around this documentation, including T. Um, let's see, let's see if I can find another one that has E. Oh gosh, I feel like I'm now I'm just probably terrifying people with all the different, I mean, there's two ways to look at this, right? And one is that what is going on here, right? The second one is, um, there's all this built-in stuff that someone, all these problems people already solved for me, right? Like lists in Kotlin actually do have a tremendous amount of built-in features that you can use. Um, and some of this stuff is stuff that we won't even cover in this class. Like you'll be discovering it later and you'll be programming in Kotlin like you know, a year or two from now and you'll find methods and you're like, wow, that's so useful. I never knew that was there. Right? And it's kind of a neat thing about the language. Um, somehow I am managing not to find <laughs> find any others that have this, the, the type parameter that I'm looking for, although there are, there are many, many different type parameters in here. Um, actually, hold on a sec, let me go back to the top, run back to safety. I think I saw another one kind of right at the very beginning um, that we can look at. Uh, let's see. So I was glad that there was actually a contains method there for me. Oh, right, get, right? So in, index of is a good one. Um, so, so here's a, a function called index of, and you can try this in the playground, right? You can create a list and then call index of. Index of gives you the index of the first occurrence in the list um, of, the, of an element. Now, it's the first occurrence because you can have multiple occurrences of that element. Let's say I have a list 
one, two, three, one, two, three, and I call index of one, well, when I'm going to back a zero, even though that value exists twice in the list. So it's the first, you know, starting from the beginning of the list and working into the rest. Um, and you'll notice this is actually a method that I think was, uh, goes way back to the early days of Java that Kotlin built on top of. And, and so it returns negative one if it doesn't find the element, right? And that's sort of a special value. Negative one is never a valid index for a list because it's negative. And so that's a sentinel value that's used to indicate that the list doesn't contain the value. So there's another example of something that takes that type parameter E. Um, you know, don't freak out looking through some of this stuff yet. Uh, look at examples, ask questions, work through stuff. Most of this works the way you would expect. That's what's kind of neat about it, right? If you call contains on a list of ints, you need to pass it an int because you're looking for an int. If you call index of on a list of strings, you need to pass it a string because you're looking for a string. So most of the stuff just works exactly the way that you would think, um, even though there is some like pretty powerful conceptual machinery that's operating behind the scenes.